Ahoy there, androgynous green bags. Today we're going to take the T6 out for a spin. This video will cover the setup for a spin, maneuver entry, some details on the progression of a spin, and how to execute a recovery. As a disclaimer, the spin demonstrated here is being held in for four turns. Aside from the four turn spin syllabus SSR, initiate your OCF recovery procedures after one turn unless briefed otherwise. If you look behind you, you'll see Cyborg, who is nice enough to ride in the front seat today and control the camera. If you look back to the front like you're supposed to, you'll see one example of how you can set up for a spin recovery. About 160 knots will give you enough airspeed to get the nose up to the right attitude prior to your stall. In order to spin, you need to be at least 13,500 feet MSL and have been in non-inverted flight for at least 5 seconds. Because the high mo is start at 14,000 feet, 17,000 feet is a commonly suggested minimum altitude for a single turn OCF recovery. Pitch the nose up between 15 and 20 degrees nose high. Avoid having any bank in during the setup for your spin. Bank can exaggerate oscillations in the roll and yaw axes during the spin and it's just not a very good time. When your altitude is sufficient, pull the PCL to the idle stop. You will have to silence the gear warning horn prior to the spin as the aircraft slows past 120 knots. The button is located on the lower left hand corner of the gear handle bezel. Your torque is going to drop close to zero. Don't move the PCL from this point until after the recovery. Your airspeed is going to drop. Your target entry speed is 80 knots. As you approach 15.5 AOA, the stick shaker will activate. As you hit 80 knots, pull the stick to the full aft stop centered on your zipper, and push the rudder pedal to the full forward stop in the direction you want to spin, in this case, left. Congratulations, you've done it! You are now a projectile. During the spin, don't be prematurely alarmed by fluctuating N1 or torque. This is the PMU regulating NP in order to minimize torque stresses on the prop shaft. After the brief number of turns, normally one, initiate your inadvertent departure from controlled flight boldface, which, in accordance with the 01 August 2018 revision, is PCL idle, controls, neutral, altitude, check. To execute the boldface, check that the PCL is at the idle stop. If it was not at the idle stop, you're going to have to reference the emergency landing pattern video also found on this channel. Secondly, move the stick from the full aft position to a neutral position and center the rudder pedals. Neutral stick can vary based on how you were trimmed, so a good technique is to check the stick position that neutralizes the control surfaces prior to takeoff. If you set a stick position and suddenly feel like you're falling towards the canopy, go ahead and work that little guy back a fuzz. Thirdly, to check your altitude, look at your altimeter. Ensure you recover prior to the MOA floor. If you can't recover before 6,000 feet AGL, do not delay the decision to eject. As you'll see, the T6 will generally pop out of a spin within two turns of initiation of the bolt phase. As the plane comes out of the stall, begin to add backstick pressure and max perform a nose low recovery to the horizon. Before pushing up the power, check oil pressure. If your oil pressure is below 40 psi for longer than 5 seconds at idle, you're going to get a master caution, and a master warning fairly shortly thereafter. Low stagnant oil pressure is indicative of a system malfunction, and can lead to engine seizure. To run through some fun quick math, uh, we started the spin at 20,700 feet, and recovered at 16,400 feet for a total loss of about 4,300 feet. Dash 1 predictive loss considerations are 500 feet per stabilized turn and 2,000 feet for recovery for an estimated loss of about 4,000 feet, and I'd say the numbers are pretty close. Some final points on OCF recovery. If you've read the Dash 1, and you probably should, you may have noticed that there are different procedures for OCF recovery versus a spin recovery. This is because out-of-control flight can define several different kinds of semi-controlled falling, such as a spiral. The OCF recovery boldface will solve all of these if applied in a timely and accurate manner, whereas spin recovery procedures have an orientation bias and the potential to exaggerate certain OCF conditions, such as a spiral. It's been determined that the speed and ease of the OCF boldface application makes up for the marginally faster recovery of the spin recovery procedures. Now that that's all said and done, we're going to go ahead and play that footage back once more in real time without all the interruptions. Be sure to watch with a sick bag handy.